tell me a little bit about your love of basketball and where it came from. Well, I started listening to college basketball at the age of 10, uh, listening to the Fighting Illini's radio broadcast with Brian Barnhart and the Indiana Hoosiers with Don Fisher. And it was through those two individuals that I really started to learn about college basketball. And then at the Indiana School for the Blind, I became friends with Butler, now Boston Celtic head coach Brad Stevens, who gave me a chance to be at the scorer's table with their radio commentators for home games. And then Coach Marty Simmons from Evansville gave me an opportunity to sit on the basketball bench for four seasons. Very cool. You're from our viewing area, right? Where are you from? I'm from Claremont, Illinois. Which is in what county? Uh, Richland. That's Richland County. That's what I thought. Um, you did your undergrad at Evansville, right? Yep. And is that when you really had a chance to try out your broadcasting ability? Uh, well, during my time at Evansville, I was able to commentate uh, 94 games, soccer for men's and women's, baseball, softball as well as men's and women's basketball. So that really gave me an opportunity to commentate and to learn how to better my skills and better understand the flow of a game. Were you, uh, were you born without sight or, or how did that come about? Well, I was born uh, four months premature and for the first part of my life, for the first couple of weeks, I could see a small bit and then that dissipated and now I can only see some light and shadows. So you've, so you, uh, what, how, what, when they give you like a percentage, are you completely blind? How? Pretty close. Pretty close. Um, and that's all you've ever remembered. Yeah. You don't remember anything no. more than that. <clears throat> is it tough to call a basketball game? Uh, soccer is the hardest sport to call. Basketball is pretty easy, and uh, baseball and softball is the easiest. But basketball is not anywhere as hard as soccer is to commentate. You say basketball is easy. Yeah. You can't see the floor. How does? How can that be easy? Well, in basketball, there's five players you have to worry about. And in soccer, there's 11 individuals running all over the field. And in basketball, if you've listened to enough games, you can have basically heard about every play or almost every situation over 10, 10 years of listening to basketball on XM radio. So it's not that hard. Talk about when you're getting ready for a game, when you're thinking about a game, what goes through your head? Well, I spend time uh, studying notes on the players and coaches. I talked to both coaches, Coach uh, Rigby from Troy, and this week I spoke to Coach uh, Covington from Evansville because her brother, Garrett Covington, plays on the Western Illinois men's basketball team, and I'm good friends with him. He shoots free throws with me. And um, so just getting ready for the game, but also being thankful for the opportunity to commentate because this is how I grew up listening to basketball and still do listen to all the sporting events that I listen to, whether it's my friends in Major League Baseball from the Pirates or Twins or whomever uh, manager's team that I'm friends with, I always listen on the radio. So I'm always thankful to be able to give back and help others understand sports. Talk a little bit about, can you remember the first game you called and what that feeling might have been like? Well, the first game I ever commentated was a Southern Indiana men's basketball game against the University of uh, Indianapolis. And it was just a lot of fun to be on the radio and commentating and there were some things that I wish I would have done better for example the game was close at the end and my friend uh, Dan Agurski was trying to to diagram the end of game situation and I interrupted him with a pointless comment about a timeout so it was good to be on but I've definitely learned some things since that first game absolutely haven't we all <laughs> um, has anybody ever told you you couldn't do this uh, people always don't think that I can find a job in sports or commentate uh, basketball so I just have to send them games and then talk to them and hope that that gives them uh, motivation enough to let me do it but that doesn't always work out and sometimes individuals still won't let me commentate basketball games or do things in sports. How does it make you feel when you overcome the odds? I mean obviously it's, it's a different skill set for you to commentate a game than it is for me to commentate a game for example. How do you overcome that and, and how does it make you feel when you do? Well, um, I overcome that by just studying and talking to as many coaches as I can and uh, convincing individuals as hard as I can to uh, give me that opportunity and as far as making me feel good, um, I don't really get too excited because I know that I'll just have to keep continuing doing it for the rest of my life. So there's no point getting excited when you have to face the same thing month after month. How, what, where do you want to take your, you know, your play by your comment, commentating? Well, I think finding a job and commentating would be hard for me since I can't see, I can't do the play-by-play, -play. and most uh, jobs uh, for the analyst go to a former player and coach, 
And since I'm neither of those, I understand it'll be tough for me to find a job in commentating, so I'm going to commentate as much as I can and then see what sort of a job I can find uh, after that, if not in broadcasting, maybe in speaking or marketing or sales. Uh, at the moment, I'm creating marketing plans for my friend Pat O'Connor, the president of Minor League Baseball, to help get more blind and disabled individuals hired into Minor League Baseball. And that's important to me because I know how hard it is for a blind or disabled individual to find a job. And if Pat would like me to do something such as that for the rest of my life for him or whoever the next president is, whenever Pat uh, retires, I'd be happy to do that. Talk a little bit about if you could have a message for other blind folks that maybe struggle with day-to-day -day stuff that's, you know, that you've just made easy for yourself over time, what advice would you give them? Well, uh, <clears throat> you, can't, you can't do it all uh, by yourself. Uh, you shook hands with my friend Maggie. Uh, from the dance team, Maggie, uh, has really helped me out and we've been friends for uh, three years. Um, back when I was a student at Evansville, she would help me um, make it from place to place or talk to the opposing coach on the court or sometimes shoot free throws with me or always be there to hit me uh, on the knee with her pom-pom when she would uh, bring Evansville's team out uh, before the games. Uh, so I guess you know, having people to help you, whether it's someone like Maggie or people like Coach Patino and other high profile individuals, uh, they all come together and are uh, uh, always there for me and always willing to help me find a job in sports so I can inspire others. Uh, they say if you don't have one sense, the others get stronger. And I noticed that when I introduced myself to you, you knew who I was just by the sound of my voice. Is that, do you think that's true? Do you think your other senses are stronger because you can't see? Well, I think hearing has to be so I can uh, listen to basketballs that might be flying and hitting me in the head if a player doesn't catch them, or uh, listening to individuals walking down the wrong side of the sidewalk at Western Illinois, so I have to move out of their way quickly or else we're going to have a collision. Uh, so I think hearing for sure. You're at Western now for grad school, right? Yeah. Um, this is going to be an interesting question. What's that? This is going to be an interesting question, and my answer is going to be even more interesting. <laughs> um, so what are you going to do when you're done with school? Well, uh, said about the marketing stuff. Well, um, I don't really have a dream job in sports because my dream in life is to be able to see, and if I can't do that, I'd like to find a job where I can inspire others and show fans, players, and coaches there's more important things than just winning games. The lessons that players and coaches take with them after every game is far more important than the, than the final result or final outcome of a game. And I hope there's some team out there who will give me the opportunity to do that, whether that's in professional sports or in college athletics. So I'm trying to talk to as many people as I can from college athletics, the NFL, the NBA, and Major League Baseball. You seem to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you seem to be optimistic. You seem to have a great attitude about this whole thing where I might be pretty bitter if I couldn't see. Um, how do you keep that optimism? Well, if you're upset about something that you can't change or that might never uh, uh, be able to change no matter uh, how hard that I might try with all the times that I go to uh, Detroit, uh, Michigan to have my eye doctor uh, look at my eyes, uh, that'd be a long time to go through life being bitter and upset. So you just have to be uh, joyous and thankful for the people uh, that I have who've helped me in all the things that I've gotten to be able to do. Um, have a champion, have a national championship ring from Louisville and my friend Coach Patino, and that's something that I never thought that I would uh, be able to have since I can't see. I know that that uh, meant a lot for Coach Patino to get that for me because he usually doesn't get that for individuals who aren't on his team. And then for Coach uh, Marty Simmons and Evansville to let me sit on the basketball bench for four years and sit on the bench for this game this evening against um, Ohio, even though I'm not a student. They still uh, let me be part of their basketball family even though I'm not attending school here. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, like you meant, you touched on it, but, you know, as a kid growing up in rural Richland County um, and growing up blind, did you ever think you'd have the opportunity to have so many high profile individuals just welcome you into their lives? Well, um, I guess I'd never thought about that opportunity, but um, I reached out and got most of these coaches myself, so no one really helped me find them. Uh, that was an individual who helped me get, uh, get in contact with the Evansville coaches, but Coach Patino, all the Major League Baseball managers, Mr. Hurdle from the Pirates, uh, Mr. Paul Molitor from the Twins, Mr. Osmus from the Tigers, I've just figured out the email systems for different teams or found someone who cares enough who wants to help me if I can't get through to these people. Um, 
So it's all been a lot of, of just going out and doing it myself. And I think that, that, that scares some people um, because they wouldn't do that uh, themselves because they'd be scared someone would tell them no or not want to talk to them. How does it feel being a, in the media yourself, getting all this media coverage? Well, um, I don't know if I would consider myself uh, in the media and uh, um, the coverage. Um, I give credit to you know, most people who help me out. Um, I always try and get uh, one of them um, into my articles if I can. And you know, people have just wanted to write about the people who've helped me. Um, sometimes it's been a struggle. Uh, Mike DeCourcy from Sporting News, I sent you that article. And in that article, it talks a lot about some of the individuals who would eat lunch with me at Evansville. And Mike, for the longest part, didn't want to write about those people because he didn't think that was part of the story. So I had to convince him that they were important too, and without them that I wouldn't be able to do everything that I do, whether at Evansville or at Western Illinois with a new group of individuals who I have helping me there.